St. Levens Houten in Flanders, the Dutch-speaking part of Belgium, is not a village like any other. You can see that immediately on arriving for the first time. In the middle of the village, there is a vast open space, a square, unusually large for a small rural community. Every year on the 12th of November, this is where the Winter Fair is held, a tradition that dates back to the Middle Ages. I've been on the cattle market here for years. Always the same place, and I always sell my animals. No bother at all. There's masses of people here. I like it. If you're used to coming, you enjoy it. So why not keep on coming? It is the last remaining large open-air livestock market in Flanders, and they're rightly proud of that in St. Levens Houten. Of course, it's a festive occasion, and one that has existed for centuries. The fair is the highlight of the year for everyone in St. Levens Houten. As far as the cattle are concerned, there are about 2,600 animals here. And the crowds, they say that there are about 40 to 50,000 people here on the 12th of November. And it's not only famous in Belgium, it's everywhere. In Holland, in France, in Germany. You can find people from all those countries here in St. Levenshouten. Let's say West Europe. All West Europe comes to St. Levenshouten. It is a tradition stretching back almost a thousand years. All the villagers have a soft spot for the market in their hearts. For the people of St. Levens Houghton, I think that the social aspect is the most important part of the annual market. For people who don't live here, the market is the most important thing. But not for me. The social side beats everything. I come from St. Levens Houghton, so you can't miss the fair, can you? You were born with it, look forward to it for a month, it's always in your head. The animals are bred, they are sold, they are slaughtered, and then they are eaten. And all this combined with a fur, with chips and donuts, with people drinking and being happy. Yes, it's also organic. The Houghton annual fur is no imitation. It is not an idea that has just been pulled out of thin air, which is often the case with some other cities, which only have a tradition of carnival dating back some 30 or 40 years, or with cities which rehash some old folklore festival from the good old days of yore and have modernized it with all kinds of modern attractions. These all have an artificial feel to them, a feeling of imitation, but the Houghton Annual Fair is authentic. The Annual Fair is based on the legend of St. Levinus. A saint is someone who, after his death, is honored by the Catholic Church for his piety or good deeds. Levinus was a Scottish bishop who in the seventh century came to convert this part of Flanders to Christianity. It was in this context, to preach the gospel, that St. Levinus came to Houghton. Apparently, the people were not all that happy to see him come and feared the introduction of Christianity. It seems that he was attacked by a number of local ruffians who tore out his tongue. Why his tongue? Because, as a missionary, his tongue was the instrument which he used to convert people. And that's why, in a lot of later iconography, Levinus is depicted with a pair of pincers, the instrument of torture which was used to rip out his tongue. Levinus was given a final resting place in the church of St. Levin's Houghton. From nearby Ghent, people began to make an annual pilgrimage to his grave. If you have an event which involves the mass movement of people, of perhaps tens of thousands of people, every year from Ghent to St. Levens Houghton, then this inevitably causes a number of logistical problems. There has to be a supply of food and drink, and not everyone will go on foot. Some will take animals, horses, carts and the like. And so what you get is a mass of consumers all converging on the same place and all with needs to satisfy. This almost automatically leads to the development of an annual fair. There is no historical proof at all that Levinus ever existed. But the flood of people who come to his grave grows by the year. They eat, drink and are merry. It actually has very little to do with religion anymore. We have many texts from church sources, of course, reacting with outrage to the amount of drinking that went on and to the bawdy behavior. The oldest historical evidence of an annual fair is a document dating from 1339, 
It is the judgment of a court about the toll that the stallholders had to pay to the church. In the years which followed, the annual winter fair grew to become the most important animal market in all Flanders. What kind of animals do you sell? Whites and blues, for the freezer, pregnant heifers and for breeding. The same thing every year and almost always the same buyers. If you sell a cow, I have heard that you strike a bargain by clapping hands. Is that right? Yes, we do. Clap and sell. Each clap adds 25 euros to the price. If you add, you have to clap. That's how the animal is sold. Every year, there is a show for pedigree horses. So now we are grooming the horses. The manes have to be braided with the three colors of the Belgian flag. Their hair has to lie nicely, and the tail has to be braided nicely too, so that they look good when we take them into the ring. In the ring, the horses have to line up for the jury, and then the horse has to walk, and after that to trot. We look first at the general appearance of the horse, the breed, its back, its neck, the shape of its legs, then the way it walks and the way it trots. At the end, the three of us all give points. We are a family of farmers. My father and grandfather also had farm horses, Belgian cart horses. I guess it's in the blood. We are all sons, daughters, grandchildren or great-grandchildren of farmers or agriculturalists. And perhaps that's the secret of the fur. It's in our genes. There's something that itches in our DNA. Those traces of farming, those roots in farming that we all have in us. Yes, they form a subconscious link with the past. Een stukje van het archief en onze oude garage hebben wij uh, ingenomen om een eenmalig uh, cafeetje te organiseren. Maar het is een eenmalige bezigheid. It's something that has to be kept going. The people from the region here take a day off on the 12th of November, that they keep on coming, for the animals, for the stallholders, for the pub owners, for anyone who has anything to do with it. It all has to keep on going. It's something that we need to save. Yes, there are fewer farmers, fewer cattle, fewer horses, but farmers still make up one to two percent of the working population. And yet it goes much deeper than that. It is something unique to a region, something that is carried by that region in its heart. And that is exceptional. I think that the Houghton Fair, like no other, combines history with authenticity and vitality.